Hello, and thanks for watching today. Uh, my name's Tyler Bragg. I'm the GIS coordinator for the city of Oak Hill here in West Virginia. And today I wanted to showcase uh, something we put together here for conducting asset inspections in the field uh, using ArcGIS. Now, this particular um, inspection process is uh, for our lift stations in our sewer department. Um, these inspections are conducted weekly and uh, we needed a, a uh, better solution for uh, helping us with uh, recording the inspection data uh, and archiving that data as well. So this is going to include um, conducting the actual inspection and collecting the data with your uh, phone or tablet or other mobile device. Uh, and then it also includes um, a, an archive process that, that takes place automatically, um, as well as a dashboard for administration and management to um, go in and, and look at, uh, at all the inspections, uh, in addition to work logs we have as well. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to go into this and um, first I'm going to do a, an overview of the process. Uh, and after I get done with that, then I'm going to go into uh, a little bit more in-depth technical description of all the components and, and how they work together. So I'm going to share my screen here and we'll get started. Okay, let me make sure we're good here. All right, I think we're I think we're in good shape. Okay, so <clears throat> I first got my my phone screen displayed here. We're going to walk through uh, the inspection process as the inspector in the field uh, would conduct the inspection. So this is using uh, ArcGIS field maps. So we're going to open the field maps app. And you'll see a map here that's got several dots on it. Um, these are all of our lift stations. Uh, we have one additional um, wastewater treatment package plant uh, on here that, that's inspected as well. Um, but all these dots, these are green right now. They're color coded so that they, um, they'll stay green for a few days uh, and then they'll turn yellow uh, indicating that they have, um, you know, it's been a couple of days since the inspection. Uh, after seven days, they turn red. So, so when you open this map, uh, the colors that you see will give you a very, very quick indication as to, um, you know, the status of the last inspection. Uh, so if you would zoom in on one of these, let's see. Let's zoom in here. <clears throat> if we click on one, it's going to bring up a, a pop-up menu. Uh, and we've got a couple of different options here. We can conduct a uh, lift station inspection um, and we can also put in a work log entry if there's a, a specific uh, work uh, log that has to take place like uh, replacing a pump or, or doing some other electrical work or you know something a little more in depth than just the um, you know the, the standard inspection. And it also shows us really quickly here when the uh, last inspection date was. Um, uh, so we can get a, a real quick idea just by clicking on one when the last time it was inspected. Um, so I'm going to go through now and go ahead and do a, a test inspection so you can see this process. So I'm going to click on the list station inspection uh, hyperlink and that's going to open up the survey one, two, three app uh, on the phone. And so, so here's the, uh, here's the survey form for the inspection. Um, it automatically brings over the station name as well as the number of pumps at that station. Um, those two things are automatically brought over by the way this, um, this survey is configured. Um, we'll go through here and um, we'll put a, a, that doesn't want to work. Okay, let's see. I'll do this with my phone. All right, so we'll set the time. 9 a.m. We'll say we left at 9.15 a.m. 
Okay, so now we've got some information here, uh, pump one information. So we want to read the hours on the clock of that pump. So we'll notate that. We can also check the amps. Uh, this doesn't happen every inspection. So there's a yes or no option. If you hit no, you can just move right along. If you hit yes, uh, it brings up options for the, the amp readings uh, for that particular pump. But we'll say no. Uh, we've got two pumps at this station. So we'll just fill in some information and we'll say no there. Um, does this lift station have a generator? Some do, some don't. Uh, if you hit yes, then it brings up some additional information we want to collect during this inspection. Um, we'll say no. Um, did you remove any grease? Um, if you say yes, it asks you, okay, how, how much grease did you remove? So we'll notate that. Uh, and then various other aspects. Um, some of these, if you hit yes, brings up some additional information but we'll go through here real quick and we'll just say, you know, we'll say we mowed, we didn't paint. Uh, again, if you click on the weed spray, it asks you, you know, how much weed spray did you use? Inspection notes, uh, you could write, uh, write any notes here. Uh, if the station needs a significant repair, we can put a repair order in here by choosing yes. Uh, we can say uh, pump one needs replaced soon. Okay, so we've got the inspection date, which is going to default to today's date. We're going to choose uh, the inspector here. We also have the option to add a video or excuse me, a photo. So I'm just going to take uh, take one photo, and now we're done. That's the inspection. Um, so we'll hit the little check mark down here in the bottom right, and say send now. That's going to send our inspection, and that process is done. So we can close out survey one, two, three. Go back to the map, and. Uh, well, let's go ahead and we'll do a work log entry while we're here for this same uh, lift station in the event that we were conducting some work here. So we're going to hit that work log entry. Again, it's going to open up a different survey in survey one, two, three. And um, here's the here's the survey. Again, brings over the station name uh, from the main layer. Uh, today's date's automatically filled in, which you can change that if you want. Uh, by clicking clicking the box and, and selecting your date. Um, we can uh, describe the work that we performed here. So let's say old pump number one and place with spare pump. Okay, we can choose the workers that we've got here in case we had more than one. This is a multi option question. <clears throat> so we'll say we had three workers here. Now we want to take some photos of the work. We might, uh, we might take, I'm just going to take some here in the office, but uh, I'm going to take four different ones here. Let's get one of ourself here. Get one of my screen. And we'll just get one of the rest of the office here. All right, so we've now got four photos attached. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the check mark to submit that survey. And as soon as that sends, just takes a moment. <clears throat> we can close out survey one, two, three, go back to the map and um, move forward with uh, the next inspection that we need to do. So in a nutshell, there's a few other things you can do with this um, with this field map, um, we can also um, we can also edit the main lift station information. If we need to go in here, we've got a lot of information about the lift station and the pumps that are there at the lift station. Uh, we can update any of that information that we need to here, uh, but we won't do that for now. Um, so that's pretty much the the field the field operation here. Um, now let me show you the 
dashboard. Let me refresh that. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you the dashboard here. This is what the administration or the management would use to, um, to view all of the lift station inspections as well as the um, work logs that go with it here. So uh, on the left, we've got some different category selectors. We can filter our dashboard down. <clears throat> you can see uh, in the center section, we've got a map, uh, which also shows uh, the, the points color coded by the last inspection. And in this case, you can see all the ones that are yellow that are showing that they've been inspected uh, more than two days ago. Uh, now the one that we just did uh, called Halstead Street here is showing up green. And so that was based off the inspection that I just submitted. So it's recognizing that it was just inspected. So now we're going to turn it green. Um, again, over on the left, you've got um, you got some filters. So if I just want to see information for one particular station, um, I can, now let's choose Halstead Street. That's the one we just did. So I can click this button and it's going to filter the map to show just the one that pertains to the button that I clicked for that one lift station. It's going to also, uh, on the right-hand side, we've got a list of our, of our inspections. And so you can see that in the system right now, we have three inspections so far for Halstead Street, one that took place on uh, February 4th, one on the 8th, and one on the 11th. <clears throat> now, if I click on any one of these inspections, uh, this pane over here that says lift, lift station inspection details is going to populate with that information. And so as I click down through here, you can see the data change, the inspector, the date inspected, the time, Okay, and then you can go down and look at all of the inspection data, what happened during that inspection, and if there are any photos, they'll be listed here at the bottom. So that was the photo I took. Okay, now we can go back, we can go back and return to all stations, uncheck the inspection, and now everything shows back up. Um, we can also narrow it down. Uh, there was a, a question in the survey that says, does the station need repairs? Um, so we may just want to see the ones that, that need repairs. Uh, we can just hit yes there. And now it's going to show us all the inspections for all the stations that uh, were marked as needing repairs. And so we could click on that inspection and look at the repair order description over in the details and see what the problem is. Pump one needs to be replaced soon. And then we can, of course, return back to our main section here and uh, view all the data again. Uh, we can also filter this down over on the left here by a start and an end date if you want to narrow the results or what you're seeing here based on the date. So <clears throat> I've got some in here from the 4th uh, up through today. So let's, let's just filter down. Let's say I want to see everything for the week of uh, the first week of February. So... I'm going to start on February the 1st and I'm going to end on the 5th and now that's going to filter uh, everything in this dashboard down to the dates uh, within that range. So you can see if you look at the dates on the right, everything uh, is within that time period. And so then I can clear that back out to see everything again. So that's the lift station inspections. Now at the bottom of each uh, one of these particular um, tabs here or, or uh, slides, you can choose, um, there's an option here to uh, spin around to another, another set of data. So down at the bottom on the right here I am, lift station inspection list, if I click the arrow, now I'm gonna look at the lift station work logs. And that was the second survey I submitted um, over where the details are, I'm gonna also choose the arrow, to switch over to the work log details. And so now I can choose one of these and I can see all the information about what was done during that work log um, and also the photos that were attached. So I can filter through this particular one is the one that I just did in this video, um, show the four photos that I attached in addition to that, behind the scenes, all of this information is put into a nice uh, Word document format. Uh, and I'm gonna click on this so you can see it a little better. So we've, we kind of put all this information onto a work log sheet. 
uh, that we can keep for future reference. Now, this also goes um, and is stored separately outside of the GIS system. Uh, we have a, a we use ShareFile um, uh, for a lot of our organizational storage, and this actually automatically uploads to um, ShareFile, so that this is going to be stored separately as well. <clears throat> so. Um, that's kind of the dashboard. It kind of shows you what all you can do. Uh, there's several other things that you can do, but that gives you the general gist of things. So as these are coming in, this is live. So as these are coming in uh, from the field, I can sit here and, you know, refresh my screen and I can watch, um, you know, any, any inspections or work logs that are, that are being submitted and kind of have that information uh, instantaneously. <clears throat> so, uh, in addition to being stored in the dashboard, uh, also part of some of the automated processes behind the scenes, um, all of the information in the inspection and the work logs gets automatically uploaded to an Excel document that is stored in our Office 365 cloud account. Um, so this is shared out to people within our organization and um, they can have access if they want to view this information uh, in this format, or if we need to export some information out really quickly, we can do it with, uh, with this. So uh, if we look here on line 42, um, while I was presenting everything else, um, this inspection that I just completed in this video um, uploaded. And so here's the one we did it for Halstead street. And now, um, you know, you can look at the top and see all of your different field headings and we can slide across and look at all the information that we submitted with this inspection. Okay. And so the same thing happens <clears throat> into a different Excel spreadsheet with the work logs. And so in this particular spreadsheet, uh, down at the bottom, we have a tab for each lift station um, and the package plant that we have. So we, we've got 21 in total. So they're all going to have their, uh, they're all going to be listed down here. And so I'm going to find the one for Halstead Street. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me delete that sheet. Okay, here's Halstead Street. Okay, and so here is, uh, here is the work log that I just submitted a few moments ago. And so in addition to the information, uh, if I click on the hyperlink, this opens us up to our um, share file directory and opens up the document that was generated, the, the work log document that was generated. And so here it is, we were just looking at this in the dashboard and now we're looking at it um, you know, the actual document in our share file account. And so we've got all the information, who was there, station name, description of the work, along with the four photo attachments um, there with it as well. So that is, that is the general gist of what this application does. Um, it, it seems to be working great so far. Um, there's always a few little tweaks you can make to it. So, you know, we're, we're doing that as well, but, but we've, uh, we've had it in place for a few weeks now. Uh, it seems to be working well in the field, uh, seems to be working well from the back end. So, so we're really excited about this. And, and I think this is going to really improve our process for collecting this information and, and storing it, archiving it, um, having it for future reference. Uh, and just being able to look at it and access it and have that information right on hand when we need it. Um, so that's the overview. That's kind of what this does. Uh, I think I pretty well, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I pretty well covered about everything there that it does. Um, maybe you can find a use uh, if you're watching this, you can find a use in your organization um, for something like this. And so with that being said, uh, now I'm going to, switch over and kind of go through some more of the technical setup. Um, that was the overview. Now we're going to dig in just a little bit more and, and kind of get into some of the meat and potatoes of, of how this is set up and how it works. 
uh, for those who may be interested in setting something like this up uh, in their organization. Uh, I'm not going to go into every single detail, um, every single parameter that was set up. I'm going to try to show you most everything, uh, kind of give you an idea, and, and, and then you can uh, sort of set it up for your particular application, uh, however you see fit, um, if you're kind of following this video to um, get an idea of how we did this. Um, so bear with me just a moment. I'm going to get a few things set up. Uh, I'm going to pause this and come right back and uh, we'll dig into uh, we'll dig into the um, kind of meat and potatoes of, of how to get this set up. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna I think I've got this set up now. I'm gonna try to explain this as best as I possibly can. Uh, bear with me. I'm gonna be switching back and forth between several different applications and, and trying to not miss anything. So just bear with me. Um, as I go through this. Um, so this getting into the technical explanation of this build, um, <clears throat> this brings together several different uh, applications across different platforms. We've got um, ArcGIS web maps, we've got ArcGIS field maps, we've got Survey123, uh, we've got uh, ArcGIS dashboards, we use IntegraMap for a lot of the, well, for the automated processes. Um, we're, we're doing some automated updating using the ArcGIS REST API. Uh, we've got Cloud Convert that's, that's doing some conversion for us. Uh, Office 365, which, which holds the, um, the Excel documents where we upload everything. Um, also, we use Microsoft Word in this as well. And, um, and, and for us, we use uh, ShareFile. And so that's all brought together to kind of put all this information where we wanted it to go. Um, so let me get started here. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so this all starts in ArcGIS Pro. Uh, and you're going to do all the setup for this. This is, this is um, really for GIS professionals. So you're going to do all the setup to make this process able to be done. Starting here in ArcGIS Pro you're gonna be setting up related tables. Now you can use this on an existing layer. You can create a new layer. Uh, it doesn't really matter. If you have an existing layer in ArcGIS Online, you're gonna to have to download that layer. <clears throat> you know, you don't, you don't wanna start messing with your live layer that, that's on the web. So download an instance of that layer <clears throat> and, and have a local copy. Um, you're gonna be adding related tables to it. Um, getting all those tables and the relationships set up, uh, and then you're going to republish. And however you see fit, you, you basically will be overwriting the data that you have in ArcGIS Online and replacing it with what, um, what you just created in Pro uh, with the related tables attached to that. So um, I'm not going to go into to the details of setting up the related tables. However, there's a great video and I'm gonna see if I can uh, pull this up so that you can see. Uh, bear with me, I got several tabs open here, several browsers. Okay, so this video, and I can't take any credit for this video. Um, this is Esri Ireland that, that created this video. Um, it's been up for a couple of years now. Uh, it's called Designing Related Records in ArcGIS Pro for Use in ArcGIS Online. Um, this is an excellent video. Um, and so I'm, I give credit to uh, the publisher here, Esri Ireland. I take no credit for that video. Um, but they really walk through um, how to get this set up. There's several processes to run uh, on, your, on your layer um, to get it set up properly uh, to where it's gonna function. So I would highly encourage you to go check out that video if you're looking to do this. and. Um, Basically, they go through every parameter in this video, uh, so you can you can walk right through with the video and set up your your data um, based on how they're doing uh, this. But it does work the way they've got this set up. Everything seems to work really well, and the related tables uh, worked well with that. So, um, let's see where are we going from here. Um, Okay, yeah, so once, once the related tables are set up, um, you're gonna publish your data. Uh, again, you, you, know, you choose whether to make it a, a new feature layer uh, on your ArcGIS Online account or overwrite uh, what you have there already. And that's, that's what I did. I, 
you know, overwrote what was already there. Um, so <clears throat> once you get that done, really the next step uh, is to build a survey using uh, Survey123 Connect um, off of that feature layer. Now you're gonna, you're gonna, when you create this survey, you're gonna choose to build it off of an existing feature layer, um, which you can build a survey off of any feature layer that you've got. So you're gonna choose to build it off that feature layer, uh, choose what you name it, and it's gonna automatically set up initially, it's gonna give you an initial setup of your XLS form for that survey. And um, so there's, a, there's one thing I wanna show you specifically that you do have to set up in the situation where you have a related table. Um, it, and that's under the settings tab in your XLS form and under the form ID section. <clears throat> so that form ID uh, needs to reference, when it initially creates, it's going to reference the main feature layer. Um, in this case, we have a, um, let me see if I can pull this up and show you real quick. I know I've got it up here in one of these. Ah, here we go. So when you, when you publish your layer after you've created the related tables uh, and you go to ArcGIS Online, this is the overview that shows uh, my particular layer. Um, <clears throat> you can see that I've got a lift stations point layer and then I've got two related tables um, set up with that. So in this case, I've got my lift station inspection table and my lift station work log table. So when you um, initially get that XLS form, it's gonna have lift stations, the main layer in that um, form ID section. You need to change that to whatever table you're building this survey for because it, that's where your inspections are gonna go. They're not going in the main layer, they're going in the related table. So in this case, this particular one is my inspection survey. So I want it to go to my lift station inspections table. Um, now I have two surveys built off of this, one for the lift station inspections and one for the um, work logs. So in my work log XLS form uh, for that survey, it's going to reference the lift station work log table instead of the lift station inspection. So that's one thing to note when you're setting up these surveys uh, to add data to a related table, it must reference the related table only in the form ID. And so one other nuance, uh, you may have run into this if you're familiar with survey one, two, three. Um, <clears throat> when you do photos, when you allow photos in your survey, um, you can do that in a couple of different ways. Um, two ways, primarily. You, number one, you can use a, a, um, a repeat in the survey if you're, from, if you're familiar with survey one, two, three, you should be familiar with that terminology. You can set up a repeat uh, in your survey to allow basically an infinite number. I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's limited somehow, but it, basically the user can add as many photos as they want and they can just continue to hit add photo, add photo, add photo. Um, <clears throat> the problem is when you wanna pull that information out and put it into a, what Esri calls a feature report, which is basically that Word document that I showed uh, earlier on in this video uh, that was the result of the work log. Um, there's not a real good way to handle repeated photos and pull that over into a work log or, or into a feature report, I'm sorry. Um, so the, the other way that you can add photos, uh, once you have attachments enabled on your, um, on your layer, I'll go down here to the bottom. And so you can add as many of these lines that I have on here highlighted right now. You can add as many of those as you want. I chose to do four. Um, and you, you kind of, I just labeled them image one, image two, image three, image four. You could continue going with however many images you want. But what this does is, is it, it gives them a tag. It, it attaches image one uh, as a tag to that photo so that I can then go into my report later down the road uh, when I want to pull that over into a Word document. And I can, I can specifically tell it to put image one in a certain location, image two in another location. And I'll show you that here in a little bit on the feature report template. Um, if I wanted to add a couple more of these, I'd do the same thing, um, but I, I'm not going to do that. We chose to do four um, and, and, 
you know, if there's a need, if the need arises to do more, uh, we can do that. Uh, four is a good number. It's an, enough to show pretty much everything you need. And um, <clears throat> it also fits on one page. I wanted to make that um, work log report a one page report and not, not jump over into two pages. So <clears throat> anyway, that's the, um, that's the XLS form and, and a few uh, specific things to note about that. So once you get done building your survey, um, now we can jump over to the web map. And so I'll show you a few specific things about that <clears throat> and the way we've got this set up. Um, so number one, the symbology, the way that this is set up, and, and I mentioned it before, um, these, will, these points that you see, they're yellow right now, um, they'll turn, they're, they're, when you first initially do an inspection, they turn green. And then after two days, they turn yellow and they stay yellow for uh, until day seven. And then once you hit day seven, they turn red. And so um, I'm going to pull up the um, custom expression here that tells it to do that. So you can see that and you can take note. It'll be shown on this video here. So this is the arcade expression that does that. So essentially what it's saying is, <clears throat> you, you know, defining a few variables start date is the last inspection date, uh, which I'll explain a little bit later. There is a field in the main lift station layer that as part of our automated processes, every time you do an inspection, which goes into the related table, um, part of our automated process is to go back into the main layer, into the last inspection date and populate it with the date that you just did your inspection for, and it's taken from your inspection form. And that's using the ArcGIS REST API, doing an HTTP call on that. And I'll show that over when I get over into the IntegraMAT scenario. Um, but so it, it, it says, okay, the start date is the last inspection date. Uh, the end date is the current uh, timestamp with whatever time you're opening this map, it's going to refresh every time you refresh the map, it's going to rerun this calculation. Then it determines the date difference, you know, uh, subtract the, the, the end date from the start date, determine how many days that is. And then it says, okay, well, if the age is less than two, then we're going to call, we're going to label this current. That means our inspection is current. If it's between two and seven, we're going to label it upcoming. Uh, and in which case colors it yellow. And then otherwise um, <clears throat> it's gonna be called do, which is gonna be anything over seven days. Okay, so that's the script that we use for that. Um, now, when you once you set up that script and you go into the options, um, you'll see the different options now that you have available and you can color code those, um, you know, use the symbology however you want. Um, you do, when you're initially setting this up, you have to have some test inspections you have to have some records in there with some different dates that fall into each one of these three categories for that to show up so just keep that in mind so once you get the survey built you might want to do one test survey uh submit you know submit one feature that is um you know today submit one that's you know between two and seven days and submit one that's older than seven days in order for all three of these um symbology options to show up Okay, so that's one special thing to note. Also, when you look at the pop-up, and this is the same pop-up that we saw in the mobile app, um, you have to go in and set this pop-up up uh, in order to put these hyperlinks to your surveys in there and, and um, you know, set the last inspection date. You got to go configure this. So how you do that is to go to the menu options here for the particular layer and go down to configure the pop-up. Okay, and then you're gonna choose, uh, it's by default, it's set on a list of field attributes. You're gonna choose this drop down and go down to a custom attribute display. And then you're gonna hit configure, okay? And it's gonna bring up this box. So you can type this in, uh, you type all this text in. Um, this one here just references the last inspection date um, field. And now you hyperlink these, you can select them and then you hit this button. All right, and it's gonna give you this link. Now this link 
is uh, using URL parameters. And there's a lot of documentation. If you search uh, survey one, two, three URL parameters, uh, there's several good blogs uh, put out from Esri on this and, and a lot of good forums that discuss it. But ultimately um, this first part tells it to open the, um, well, it's actually, I guess, this part tells it to open the mobile app there. If you wanted to open the web form of a survey, there's a, a different um, initial starting hyperlink there that you would use. Uh, then you specify your item ID and, um, and then from here, uh, the way, and if, if you paid attention earlier, I said that the surveys automatically bring over the station name, and like the number of pumps and a few other things. Um, and you do that with URL parameters in this option right here. So I'm telling it um, the field that's called uh, parent GUID um, that brings in uh, the globe. Whoops, I just moved that, didn't mean to. Uh, that brings in the, where did I put that? Okay, anyway, that brings in the global ID um, from the parent. Uh, the field station name, that's where it brings over the station name and the field number of pumps, it brings that over. And then in this particular one, I'm bringing over a couple of other uh, items as well from the main parent uh, feature layer. So it just goes on, I bring over several different fields here and get, get to the end there. So I'm gonna cancel that because I accidentally changed it. Same thing here with the work log entry. Uh, this is gonna pull up, um, the particular item ID. Now this item ID is the item ID of your survey. And you can get that over in the survey one, two, three web app after you publish it. Uh, and then I also bring some fields over with this as well. So that's how that's written. And once you set those up, uh, configure that, then your pop up uh, is going to look however you set it up. And now you've got two hyperlinks. Now I could click on these here, but they're not going to do anything in this particular example, because I set it up to open the mobile app and, and here on the desktop, it's not gonna open the, the mobile app. So um, I'm not gonna click on it, but you saw what it did over uh, in, the actual, um, in the actual mobile application earlier in this video. So those are, are two specific things and, and you can configure your web map um, however you wanna configure it, but that's, that's a couple of things I wanted to show. Um, I'm still working out a few little tweaks on the time, the, uh, on the date when I looked at the inspection date. Um, for some reason, I'm noticing that the um, web version here that we're looking at now and the mobile version are treating the dates a little differently. So if you've ever dealt with dates uh, in Survey123, they're a little funky and, and you know, ArcGIS Pro treats dates a little bit differently than ArcGIS Online. Um, so I'm still tweaking a few little things to get it just right, but we're mostly there. It's operating pretty, pretty close to the way it needs to. Um, okay. So now that we've got uh, the web map configured, how we want it. Um, let's see, where are we at here? Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's go over. I want to show you Integra map. Um, you may or may not have used Integramat or seen it, but um, this is this is it. So um, if you've not used it, I encourage you to take a look into it. It's uh, really useful. Um, these we've got 26 active scenarios. These are 26 things that are automated workflows, anywhere from sending an email when a new feature is created. Uh, to we've actually got some where we, we send a text to some of our field workers when, you know, something takes place. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with it. It's uh, really powerful and it's very affordable. Um, so we've been really pleased with it. Um, so I'm going to show you the lift station. I'm going to show you both the lift station inspection and the work log entry scenario that I have set up here uh, that automatically runs. So let me open up the lift station. So this is the lift station inspection scenario. So what this does, I'm gonna give you a, an overview and then I'll kind of go into a few details. Um, this first module watches the survey. Um, and so it's using web hooks. And, and if you go over into your uh, survey one, two, three web uh, application and go under settings, you can see the web hook there. Um, 
let me look here. I think I might have this open. So yeah, let me go into settings here and go under webhooks. And so this is the webhook name here, um, Integromat and then that, that number. Um, and so that's when you set this up in Integromat, that is automatically added. You don't have to do anything. It automatically adds it into the survey one, two, three settings. So this watches the survey constantly. Anytime a new survey is submitted, it triggers this process to run. So um, that's what this first module it runs. We've got a router that just says, okay, we've got two different things we're gonna do here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, or it doesn't really matter in which order, but, but the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna upload this inspection information to the Office 365 uh, Excel document that I've got sitting up in the cloud. And so you specify you know, the workbook, the worksheet, and, and then you go in here and you can use these, um, all this information that you see over here in green is the payload that came with your survey. Um, and you can choose uh, these. And so it's kind of a nice little GUI interface, so to speak. Um, you click on it and it'll add it wherever your cursor is, it'll add it in here. So you just basically, we're doing some field mapping right here to map the fields that are in the survey to what's in the Excel document. Um, so anyway, you go through and set that up. And, um, so that's going to upload there and put all the data into the fields where you tell it, you want it to go. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're going to do an HTTP request here. Um, this is using the ArcGIS REST API and, um, we're going to, um, we're going to query what we want to do. Uh, let me tell you first. This, this branch here, it starts, you, you see a HTTP, the JSON, the HTTP. Um, what we wanna do, this is the automated process that, that looks at, it looks at your inspection date from your newest inspection. Okay, then it goes and it, it, it grabs the location in the parent feature class, the feature layer. Um, it grabs the field I have a, a field in there that is the latest inspection date. I mentioned that earlier. So when you do a survey, I want in the main feature class or feature layer, I want that main layer updated with the date of the last inspection every time it's inspected. And so that's what this, this line is going to do. Uh, first thing it's going to do is it's going to go and it's going to grab um, it's going to grab some attributes specifically. I need the object ID from the parent. Um, I need that object ID to run the next, um, the, it's actually an update features, um, uh, process with the ArcGIS REST API. So I need to grab the object ID from the parent feature layer. It's not in my payload over here. So I have to go grab it. So I'm just doing a query basically on that feature layer here and I'm grabbing the uh, output field. I want object ID is the only field I need. So I do that. I've got a parse JSON here. That's going to take the JSON output of this um, query and it's going to give me, um, it's going to give me that object ID basically. Um, then with that now is where I really, the, the meat and potatoes of this comes in. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to my feature service and I'm gonna update features. And I wanna update in the main layer, the main lift station layer, I wanna update that field with the last inspection date. And that's what this is gonna do. Um, so there's a couple of different uh, um, attributes or, or specifications mm -hmm. you have to make down here. And um, I'm gonna open this one up so you can see, cause this is kind of the main thing here. So this is, uh, this is saying, okay, I want you to go and I want you to, um, <clears throat> I want you to get this object ID. And also I specified the global ID as well. So it's got two identifiers for that main feature in the parent feature class. Um, and then I want you to update uh, this field last inspection date with the inspection date that came from the survey. Um, and I've also got a, a text version of that field too, just so it, it's kind of a static text version. I use that for a couple of different things. So I'm updating two fields, the last inspection date and the last inspection date text. And the two green uh, options here are coming down here from the attributes of um, 
think it's down here a little farther. Where'd that go? The, oh, the Global ID reference. There's the Global ID reference and the inspection date calc is right here. Okay, so that's what this does. So, so again, um, this whole process is pretty simple one really, um, but it, it watches the survey. When a new survey comes in, it's gonna upload that data to the um, Excel document that we have in our Office 365 online account. It's gonna also go and grab the object ID for the parent uh, for which this inspection is being submitted. Um, and then it's gonna, it's gonna look at the current inspection date from this inspection, and it's gonna go populate the field uh, in the parent feature layer uh, with the new inspection date. So uh, that's what this one does. So that's, that's the automated process here. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you the lift station work log entry now this one's a, a, got a few more well it's got a lot more things in it um uh let me look at my notes here real quick and see if i've missed anything okay <clears throat> so here we are uh, let me describe this real quick to you what this does um again we're watching the survey um, this particular survey we're going to watch is the work log survey. All right. So we watch that survey. Anytime a new survey for that, you know, anytime one of those surveys is submitted, it's going to trigger this process. So I'm watching the survey. I'm going to create the feature report. Um, and so I want to show you my template. Let me drag it over here. So this is my work log template. Um, and there's documentation online about setting up a feature report template as well. Um, essentially, you're, you're, um, you're just listing the field names of where you want that data to go in your um, template here. So I want station name, I want the date of work, uh, the, number, the, the workers names listed, the description of the work, and then photo attachments. This is where the photos go in and, and it tells you, you know, again, remember I said uh, you specify photo one, photo two, photo three, photo four in the XLS form. That's where this comes into play. So now I can tell it specifically photo one, I want to go here. And then I've limited the size of that photo <clears throat> with some of the parameters there. So that's the template. Now that template gets uploaded over in uh, the Survey123 web app. Uh, uh, on the top ribbon here, there's an option for report. And um, if I choose a record here, um, I've got this uploaded, but you upload it here under item number two using manage templates. Um, and, and I've uploaded that, um, I've uploaded that in there. Okay, let's see here. All right, so let's go back to Integra map. Okay, so we're going to create that feature report. Um, then, then we're going to get a um, we're going to get that file. Um, so this generates the report and it gives basically a URL for that. Then we're going to get um, we're going to this HTTP module here gets that file. It's a result uh, URL. Um, you kind of just a a little nuance of Integromat. Once you create it, then you got to go get it. Um, and then we can do a couple of different things with it. So, so one, we've got another router here. We've got two different branches, uh, two different um, processes that we're going to do here. So um, I mentioned cloud convert earlier. Um, this is something new to us. We've, we've used and um, <clears throat> it's a free uh, cloud-based service, uh, free up to a certain amount of conversions. I think they allow you to do 25 per day, which we don't need to do that many. So this works perfect for us. Um, does it's really powerful. It does all kinds of different um, documents, uh, converting from one document to another. In this case, I wanted to convert from the Word document that's created out of the feature report, and I want to convert that to a JPEG image so that I can then upload that back to um, that lift station inspection feature in the, in the related table. So I want it to be attached to it. Um, so it converts it to a JPEG. Um, and then it, um, these two 
gets that JPEG and then uploads it. And, I, and I'll show you that a little bit more in depth. It uploads it to that um, related table for that, that record that is being processed at the moment. Um, so that's, that's that branch. Um, then we go on over to these other branches. And, and so the reason I have so many of them here, what this does is this uploads the Word document that was created over here in the feature report. It's going to upload that to our share file account. It's going to create a share for that um, so that I can put that link in the work log Excel. And then it uploads all that information to the um, other Excel document that we have in our Office 365 account, uh, complete with the link to the share file shared document. Um, and the reason I have so many of these is there is um, three processes here for each um, each lift station. In the Excel document, I have a tab I, I showed earlier. I have a tab for each, uh, let me see if I can pull that up here. So yeah, this is it. I've got a tab, I got a worksheet for each lift station. And so you have to specify those differently when it's a different worksheet. So that's why there's so many of them. It's, it's one set of these processes for each lift station that we've got. Okay, so let me open this up, um, create the feature report. <clears throat> Let's wait for this to open here. You can see some of these uh, parameters that are set up here. Um, the survey, you specify the survey, the uh, report template, um, you know, specify the object ID, which comes out of the survey payload and the report name. So we get all that set up and then this is to get the file. So you're just getting the result URL of the uh, feature report creation. So that's pretty straightforward. Do the cloud convert, uh, convert it to a JPEG. We get that JPEG, which is again, a URL. And then um, this is kind of, this is the neat one. We use the apply edits from uh, uh, format there with the ArcGIS REST API. Um, and here is the Here's, here's how we add that attachment to that particular record in that related table. Okay, so you can see how this is set up. Uh, took me a lot of trial and error to get this set up, but it finally got it working. This is, this is what worked for me. Okay, so there you can see that script. Okay, um, and that's pretty much it. So again, you know, watches the survey, makes a feature report, uh, converts it to a JPEG, uploads it to the uh, inspection record that we're processing at the moment. Um, then it also uploads it to our share file account and um, uploads all that information to the um, work log Excel document. Okay, let me see here where we're at. Okay, let's go over to, um, let me find it here. Let me show you a few extra things on the dashboard. Um, <clears throat> and I could go in and show you the edit version of this, but, but there's enough documentation on creating a, um, a dashboard. You know, when you set up these category selectors over here uh, that I've got set up, it's all based on the different data that you have um, in your map. It, it is important to note that, you know, I don't know how much, you know, you individually who's watching this have messed with the dashboards, but your maps, the pop-ups within the map, um, all of your details, when I, when I look at the detail list for lift stations uh, or the, the details for the work logs, all these details, they're all controlled by your web map parameters. So the way that this web map, th this is the same web map that we configured a little bit ago to use in the field. Um, you can do a different one, uh, but this one in, in this situation just happens to be the same web map. Um, your detail list here is based on the pop-up configuration of the related table over in your web map. So you, if you want this to change the, the way this looks, you have to go change your pop-up in your web map. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things you can configure within the dashboard, but some of them you have to go configure over in your web map. Um, so I, I want to show again um, the work log. I, I, we just went through the process in Integramat for how to create the 
Um, well, I showed you, let me pull it back up. I showed you the um, template here for the work log. And so that's what you upload to survey one, two, three to tell it how to format this, um, this particular document. And when I go back over, this is, this is the output. So this, this is pulling the data from the fields that we told it to um, and, and the individual photo attachments and, and placing them on the document you know, where I told it to. So that's the output of that. And again, as you can see, um, that work log from the Integromat scenario attached it as an additional. So we added four photos. And if you noticed in my survey, I only have a space for four photos. So I've got the four photos that the field worker would have uploaded. Uh, in addition, it uploads the work log as an additional photo uh, for this record. So, and you can, you can also view that. Uh, let me pull up something different here. So when you go to the data page on the individual um, uh, related table, um, the record that I'm looking at here, uh, I've got highlighted on the screen is the one that we just did in my example here. Um, and if I go under the photos and files and I see five photos, just like we see in the dashboard, um, I can go through photo one, photo two, photo three and four, and then here's the work log. So I can also open it straight up from, from ArcGIS Online as well. Okay. Yeah, let me get this working here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure I've probably missed a few things. Uh, you may have some questions. Uh, I didn't cover, like I said, I wasn't going to cover every parameter. I, I just wanted to kind of go through uh, generally to show you um, what, you know, how it was configured. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you got some use out of this. Hopefully maybe it'll um, help somebody get this configured in, you know, their organization or um, at least piqued your interest and give you some ideas. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure there's, several different ways I could have done this differently. You may be watching this and having some some better ideas of, of better ways to set things up. And that's the great thing about it. I mean, you can set it up so many different ways. Um, it's really, really great, uh, really flexible. And, um, you know, this is this is what's worked for us. I'm sure we're going to be tweaking it along the way uh, plenty. Um, but Anyway, this is what we've got so far, and uh, we're really pleased with it so far. So I hope you um, I hope you got something out of this. I hope you found this to be educational, interesting, um, maybe a little bit boring, but that's that's the way it goes with uh, get into these technical details. So um, anyway, um, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.